Artists Call was the name of the effort back in 1984 when the artistic community throughout North America rallied to protest U.S. intervention in Central America. An exhibition at the Tufts University Art Galleries focuses on that nearly forgotten moment that ultimately provided a blueprint for movements to come. Special correspondent Jared Bowen of GBH Boston has a look at the exhibit as part of our arts and culture series, Canvas. By the mid-1980s, Central America was awash in war. With the U.S. government sending money and weapons to militant forces, tens of thousands of people were slaughtered. In Guatemala, Indian villages were leveled. Soldiers waged guerrilla warfare in Nicaragua. Death squads patrolled El Salvador. Artist Beatriz Cortez was a child at the time. It was the most terrible experience because there were massacres and there was a complete destruction of entire villages, etc. But I was in the middle class in San Salvador and my parents were really great at protecting me. You wipe out all these shade-type revolutionaries. You see these banners? The violence was so horrific, protests rose up across North America. One of the most forceful and fleeting was a movement called Artists' Call Against U.S. Intervention in Central America, a grassroots effort that quickly coalesced among artists, galleries, and museums from January to March of 1984. Part of the message of Artists' Call was we can't be indifferent. We can't create culture if we participate in the destruction of others' cultures. Cortez is one of the contemporary artists featured in the show Art for the Future at Tufts University. It's as much excavation as it is exhibition. Five years in the making, it's the first time the artists' call efforts have been comprehensively re-examined. This exhibition is really focusing on the activities that happened in New York, but in fact there was 27 cities that participated as part of Artists' Call. Erina Dugan is the show's co-curator. It launched when she discovered that 12 tucked-away boxes at the Museum of Modern Art's library in New York held a trove of artists' call history. It was like a kind of awakening, you know, it was like, oh, wow, this is like way bigger than um, anyone has made it out to be. The artists' call effort spread rapidly across the U.S. and Canada, with some 31 exhibitions. In New York alone, 1,100 artists pitched in to raise awareness and aid. They marched and sold work. They performed, recited poetry, and produced films. They wanted to just kind of ignite, you know, ignite actions. There's a procession for peace where everyone walked with the names of the disappeared, and then they read the name and they tied it to a balloon and let the balloon fly into the sky as this kind of recognition of those who had been disappeared. With the searing images of photographer Susan Mizellis as an early prompt, the artist's call was trumpeted by teams of organizers and committees making phone calls, sending letters and distributing flyers. I think there was a lot of direct pointing to violence and the expression of U.S. power. And so Abigail Satinsky is the show's co-curator and says the call and response was so thunderous it took the organizers by surprise. They were overwhelmed with the response. And so that was why it spread to all these different cities is basically they just said, OK, all you have to do is take our letterhead, add your own listings and do your own thing. And this is not about a unified expression. This is about artists together. Klaus Oldenburg was among the high-profile artists who galvanized the effort, designing a widely distributed poster. He and his wife, Kosha Van Bruyggen, also conceived a monument. Though never built, it was a symbol of hope, a pencil that, while broken, still writes. Leon Golub offered up a piece he made to protest the Vietnam War, echoing a 1980s refrain that El Salvador was Spanish for Vietnam. And Alfredo Jar appropriated a Fortune magazine ad with a halting twist. We see here this sort of layered understanding of how artists are pushing against institutions to do better and pushing against media representations to do better and really building that conversation. The curators have continued the conversation into the present. They've invited artists to plumb the movement's archives for their own contemporary response to artists' call. Beatrice Cortez designed a geodesic dome home for the archives. It also speaks of the shelter and the homelessness of immigrants in the middle of the pandemic. And so it's a shelter for this archive that preserves a moment when the war in El Salvador connected with migration and with the art world. For the several months the movement took hold, the artist's call was heard. 
art was made, funds were dispatched to Central America. Its impact was big, broad, and brief, all by design. Part of the organizing committee really argued that it needed to be ephemeral, that it needed to just dissipate, and that people would go on to take those experiences and do other things with them. And they did, because virtually at the same time, there was another looming tragedy that warranted artists' attention. That was the emerging AIDS crisis. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jared Bowen in Medford, Massachusetts. The Art for the Future exhibit will travel next to the University of New Mexico Art Museum in the fall before heading to Chicago's DePaul Art Museum and Chicago's Cultural Center next spring.